this video is for the new user of a 6400M or a 6600M, or someone that wants a review of the startup procedure of their radio, or maybe you're lending your radio to a buddy to use. There's a couple of key things that you need to be aware of, and we're going to go over those right now. So one of the first things you can do is grab the manual. And you can find it just by Googling Flex Radio 6400M User Guide or 6600M User Guide as I've done here. And it'll be the first two things that'll pop up on uh, the internet. By uh, you know, clicking on it, obviously, it will bring us to this page and it will download the manual and uh, or we'll at least have it there. And if you want to download the manual, you can click the download PDF button here. Once it's downloaded, you can open it up, and I'll just move myself a little bit out of the way. And we're going to look at a couple of key things here on the front page. Uh, the knobs in the display are obviously the most important things, and that's how we use the radio. But up here is the power button, and we're going to make use of that in a minute, but not right away. We're going to hook up your radio to your antennas, your microphone, uh, maybe a speaker, and your DC power supply. Here on the back of the radio are the connections we're interested in just to get going. We, uh, we're going to plug our power pole connectors into here. And if you're a new user and you got a cable with power pole connectors on both ends and your power supply doesn't use power pole connectors or you do not, just cut them off and uh, supply your own crimps or whatever you connect it to the power supply with. We're probably going to use antenna 1 which is this one here, and it's etched on the back. Uh, you're going to plug in your microphone and maybe your key. Key goes in number five. Uh, the microphone goes in 24. It says mic. Uh, if you're using powered speakers, they're in number four. And if you're using uh, headphones, you can plug them into 27. And then in, on the hand mic, if you're using a hand mic, it connects over here to number eight, which is the push-to-talk RCA connector. Almost finished, uh, I would recommend connecting your radio to your internet or your LAN or your ethernet in your ham shack. You actually don't have to to use it, but it's good for software updates and a variety of other things like running a remote, etc. It's a little beyond the scope of what we're going to talk about today, but the LAN connector is over here. And if you bought a, uh, and since this is an M model, if you wanted to hook up an external display, you can uh, plug it in right here on port 17 so you can have a big uh, cloned screen of the front panel display. Once you get everything hooked up, we want you to turn on the 12 volt power supply, and the screen is blank right now by design, and let the uh, radio boot up internally. It takes about two minutes for it to get all settled down, and then once that internal boot up happens, then you can reach over and press the power button. Once the radio is fully powered up and ready to use, you'll be presented with a screen that looks something like this. This is my 6600M. Uh, a couple of things I want to point out, immediately this login and this smart link buttons, don't worry about them. Not You don't need them. That's only for remote operation, so you can safely ignore those for a long time or until you're ready to do some sort of remote operation. Remote being you want to operate your radio from outside your house. Uh, and that's the only time you really need to log in. You don't need to log in for software updates. You don't need to log in for day-to-day uh, -day usage. Uh, key thing down here is this gear symbol on the bottom left. If I click on the gear symbol or touch it with my finger, we will see this on Startup Auto Connect Last Radio. You probably want to turn this on and just click on it like that. And when it's like that, it's turned on. Now, I'll leave mine off. But... Uh, that's uh, the only time you need to do that. Again, this login here, you can ignore that. Touching on the top left will take me back to the previous screen. Uh, if I touch the info button here, it's, um, it's got some very good information about your radio. Uh, the serial number, the maximum lic licensed version means I can operate this radio up to maximum version 3. Say there was a version 4 available. Uh, the radio ID, the IP address, uh, it's connected to the internet in this case. Uh, the radio firmware that I'm currently loaded, which is 3.3.29. And the front panel IP, the front panel is the part we touch. That is actually a Windows tablet running uh, Windows, obviously, on it. And uh, that has a different network address. Uh, nothing to be worried about. Um, you never will ever use it, but uh, it's just informational only in case we need it to diagnose a problem. Touch on the OK. And from there, I can uh, hit the Operate button, and that will bring us into the software selection. 
Now, generally, this isn't going to change. If you have the auto connect on, you'll never worry about it. You probably won't see this until there's a version change. But I can, uh, I'm at 3.329. I can roll back to 3.239 if I wish, uh, just by clicking on it like that and hitting update or any of these other pre previous versions. If it's got a blue down arrow on it, that means it needs to be downloaded into the radio from our servers. And if it's got a green arrow on it, it just means that the software on the front panel display needs to be updated. Uh, you can try all these versions out if you like. Uh, you can go up and down pretty much without issue. Although we would prefer that if you're already at the 3.3 tree as I'm doing this, which is in June of 2022, that you not go below that only because there's significant changes in the file structure on the internal SD card. Uh, it probably won't cause you an issue if you've gotten this far, but uh, uh, you know, if you go there and you, and you break it, that's okay. We can, uh, we can fix it for you. And all this stuff is quite solvable. So uh, let's go one step further. And uh, oh, smart control. You can look that up in the user guide. Uh, it, it's all about using your uh, M model as a, re, as a control panel for smart SDR when you're running it in a PC. Sort of advanced stuff, but it gives you some big knobs on the radio. And then you can use the big display to have smart SDR uh, show more radio spectrum, etc. So we're going to run 3.3.29. I'm going to touch run and it's going to load and we will probably drop right into 20 meters. 14.100 uh, and we'll just show you a few more things and uh, just to get you going. Uh, there is another video you can look for on our YouTube channel and I will put it in the show notes that takes you through more advanced features of using the front panel uh, which is from here on then the, the operation is identical to the Flex Maestro. Now that the radio is booted up um, at, uh, on 20 meters, a couple of key things. You'll notice that the antennas up here are red and blue. Red is our transmit antenna and blue is our receiving antenna. And if we click on that, uh, it will drop open a window or we touch it with our uh, fingers. And you can see generally they're tied together. But if you happen to have a receiving antenna connected or a loop, you could just uh, touch that with your finger. You'll see it changed here. And now we're using two different antennas, uh, one for receiving, one for transmit. These are all your selectable options. The other thing is, uh, I will move myself down here into the waterfall. Uh, these meters are selectable. You can, if you don't like what you see, you know, I have two power meters here and um, I don't need two power meters, but if I click here, uh, I now have SWR, I have uh, mic level, that's what level is, compression for uh, mic compression, ALC for if you happen to be using amplifier ALC level, and again, power out. Uh, I generally I leave mine at uh, I'll toggle around again to uh, leave it at uh, mic level and we're going to talk about mic level a lot of times uh, through multiple videos but you'll see mic level peaks here you don't want them exceeding about minus five and that's just a reference for you uh, if you touch in the menu up here there's a lot of other menu choices where you can uh, change things they're one layer deep we've tried to organize them in obvious places so things are easy to find again this is covered in the addition the follow-on uh, video uh, but there is one other key thing because I know you're probably going to want to get on the air uh, if you look at the display right now if you uh, and on the extreme right in the middle and underneath one knob there's an etching that says TX menu or transmit menu and if you hold that but if you take the button you push in with your thumb gently it's going to pop this up and uh, these are transmit items that we're going to use all the time a uh, processor which turns on controlled envelope single sideband in different powers or strengths uh, your mic input you're going to if you're using the hand mic in the back it'll be mic if it's a you may not see balanced if you're on a 6400 you also have the ability to use a line in or an accessory input for microphone work um, your, these are prof, part of profiles uh, that are available. You can read about those in the um, in the manuals as well, and uh, transmit profiles. And then the other key one is the transmit filter. My low my high pass filter means we're going to pass frequencies above 200 hertz, and my low pass filter means we're going to pass frequencies uh, below 2900 in my case, which is sort of the normal. So that's the intro to uh, getting going on a 6400M or a 6600M. Hope you find that helpful. 
Don't forget to look at the follow-on video again in the show notes here on YouTube uh, on the Maestro 73. Have a great day. Thank you.